Hi, I'm Chris Groda. Hello, I'm Jeff Watley. And this is Family, Family Talks. Talks. We're so glad that you joined us again today. Today we want to talk about patience in marriage. Patience is the ability to tolerate or to uh, restrain yourself from reacting in anger or frustration at any given situation. And today we want to apply that to your husband, to your wife, to your children. Oh yes, I think when we talked about Colossians 3.12 and all those things that we've worked through, the, the, the kindness, the humility, all those things, the self-control, or the, the uh, gentleness, we're working on this last one, patience, long-suffering. I love the Greek word hupomeneo, that means like to remain under, and we're all under some kind of stress. So how do we maintain ourselves in the endurance to treat each other with the proper respect, kindness, and all those things that we should in our marriages and in our homes with our children? I think this is a, a great topic, and that's such a great question. I mean, how many of you have been sitting at the computer, you've started it up, and it takes forever to boot up? I mean, you just want to, like, click the buttons, and then that, that little cursor movement Loading. just goes, you know. <laughs> and or, you know, here recently, you know, I tried to shut my computer down, and, and it just takes forever. I wind up having to do hard starts and stuff like that, but it is so frustrating Enough that, well, <laughs> well <laughs> frustrating. come to my office and see what we can do. Um, <laughs> I think the main thing is there's, there's patterns that we can do. And one of the principles about learning patience is through practice. Is that not how when we be cautious when we ask God in our prayers for patience? Yeah. That it comes through the trials and tests like wisdom does in different ways. So first thing is to practice it with your friends. It seems to be easier sometimes with our friends, especially when I think highly of it. But it's so sad at times that those that love you the most and you love them the most is where sometimes we're the least patient with. I know. The goal of all this is not to say hurtful or do hurtful things to your loved ones, especially to your wife, especially to your husband, uh, to your children, and, and to your loved ones. And and you know, a lot of times, sometimes that, that frustration that we can feel with that little computer that's not working right is, is sometimes the way we feel towards our loved ones and these things uh, should just should not be. It's not, it's not the way it is and that's not the way it should be within Christian marriage. And so we want to talk about some things that we can do today. What's on your mind? Well, the first one was to practice it. You just got to practice it and practice it. And when you mess up, own it and try it again even more. But the second one, I was talking to Chris, and we all can be there and relate, is the idea that we need to limit our technology. The amount of uh, TV, the amount of phone time that we spend. Have you ever noticed the more time you spend engaged in that kind of activity, the least patient you are when somebody tries to interrupt or ask you a question? I know I have. I know. And so that's one of the things that we really got to be cautious with all this stay home, stay safe. Have we tuned in more to our families? Or were we tuned in more to our devices? I think that with the days of TiVo and, and now that we have on-demand television, we just need to learn how to push that pause button and stop and make our families the most important thing that we've got going. And, and so far too many times we just forget that. Uh, you know, God is, is patient towards us and He's always willing to listen. I was thinking about in Matthew chapter 18 how that there's a parable about an unforgiving uh, servant. He, he had a debt and he went and he begged his, his, uh, his master to be patient till he repaid the debt. And his master was, re it was really patient. It was a, a bigger debt than what it, somebody else even owed him. And so he wanted to go collect the debt from that guy that owned just like pennies compared to his debt. But he, he like choked and put his arms around, his hands around the neck and, and, and was so impatient. And so I think about some of us that need patience the most find ourselves being impatient. So we know that God is patient towards us, and we need to practice patience. And then we need to practice uh, listening and making our family the most important, more important than our phones, more important than what's on television. And what's next? I think, well, the idea is the listening, you know. But one of the things that's next is it's been a, a, a challenge at times is if you find yourself reacting instead of properly responding to a question or something that your family's done, maybe your, your children aren't listening as well as you think they would, or maybe it's because you hadn't listened as well as they tried to talk mm -hmm. to you. But when you see these things, identify if you can and examine yourself, what are these triggers? Mm -hmm. Try to think back to what led you to becoming so impatient. It might be words that are said. It might be noises that happen, a door, the, the loudness, the, the chaos of life. It might be the trigger, once again, that you're asked to maybe turn your attention away from something that you're enjoying when you really need to engage when there's something so much more important. 
I know when people get low blood sugar and they get a little hungry, we don't call it hangry <laughs> for nothing. No. Uh, and so sometimes if you just realize how you're feeling emotionally and physically, uh, maybe you can take a step back and, and realize that and, and catch what you're going to do before you do it. Yes, I mean, we've all acted that impetuous way, you know, that we're re we reacted quickly and it comes with regret. If we could practice just thinking about maybe what that trigger was, maybe we'll be better prepared the next time it's going on. All right, so practice patience. God is patience toward us. We need to be patient toward other people. We need to pause to listen, that is, get off our devices, make people more important. We need to identify our triggers. And then, of course, uh, what about the timing for conversation? A lot of times we find ourselves getting in a fuss. It's the, the most inopportune time. Is there a better way to, to talk about what we want or what bothers us? Is there, I mean, is there I'm, a better time than others? I know not in front of the kids. It's, oh, no. You know. To try to keep everything that keeps to be, you know, I don't want to call it an argument, uh, a passionate discussion that might seem to be uh, heated. Uh, we all have those and try to keep them away from the listening ears and try to find a more opportune time because those things also will not only cause them to be stressed, it also is a time when you might look at the situation around us and find that you start off the conversation when maybe you're both in a more relaxed state or you don't have these, uh, the possibility of a distraction. Now we have the phone ringing, our lives are chaotic, but if we can try our best to possibly find those moments that removes both the, the listening ears, the distractions, and uh, try to make sure that each other at the moment is in a more relaxed state, not the hustle and bustle and try to throw in a serious conversation as right after you talked about bills, or that might be one of the serious ones, right if you talk about what you need to pick up at the store or who needs to go to practice and all these things that go on and then try to throw in one of those discussions that takes it undivided. You know, the Bible says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. And a lot of times when you're tired and you've had a long day and you've been stressed out, uh, it's maybe it's, maybe those are not the best times because you're not really thinking clearly. You don't, you know, you get into these arguments, these angry, mad arguments sometimes, and and you get to, if you're so tired, you don't even really make sense. <laughs> you too. Yeah, but you just, you, just, you just keep arguing, and you don't even make any sense. And it's time to just shut all that down. Don't go to bed angry, and don't have those conversations that are going to cause you to, to have a, an argument right before you go to bed. Because uh, we know that verse, and every Christian couple does know that verse. And so you want to find closure in that moment, and sometimes... You ever heard the saying that it sounds kind of PETA probably have a problem with beating a dead horse. But it's the idea that you're going to just grind it into the ground when you both are really tired. And when you're really tired, sometimes you'll say something you wish you hadn't. You think it's going to end the conversation right there. And you don't really mind if you go to sleep just for a second. But catch yourself knowing that you can't solve that problem right then. But pray together that you'll have a time and you might say something like, Honey, I can't give you all the, the attention that this topic deserves. Can we please talk about it again tomorrow morning? And know that you will. You don't just say it and never talk about it. But to say maybe it's not the time. And, and truly and honestly, what we're talking about today, you may actually have to write some post-it notes and put it on your lamp beside your forehead. bed. Yeah, <laughs> You're going to have to have some reminders because we all, these are always wonderful things to think about after you've already done oh, yeah. it. Oh, so. yeah. Hindsight. All right, what's next? Well, the last one is, I guess, the idea is that we said is to make sure that you, um, I guess, take a break. Before you take a break, I guess it's uh, managing your expectations. And that's something that maybe you can explain a little better because... Well, I think about James chapter 4, and the question is, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your own desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and you do not have, you murder and covet and cannot obtain, you fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. And I was just thinking about this problem that, that James is expressing. In marriage, we have wants and desires. And a lot of times we fail to communicate what we want. And, and our spouse, I'm, I'm, I know this is the same true in our marriage, I want to please her, I know she wants to please me, but oftentimes uh, if we don't communicate what it is that we want, then we wind up being unhappy. A lot of times it's just, all you got to do is ask. Yeah, and don't, don't assume that if you don't know what I want, then you don't know me very well. Because some of us guys need sometimes a reminder because of the distractions of life of what's actually the pressing moment right then. What is really the issue? Because sometimes we'll act impatiently, we'll act either angry, and really it's trying to, what do you need? What, what, what do you need to set up an expectation of what you're trying to to, to, to get to right now. What's the thrust of all this? And if we can get there and understand that both people
can have a moment where they can vent their frustration and not be, I guess, ridiculed for their vulnerability is where the marriage really grows, where you can actually just think out loud. And husbands, listen, when your wife's thinking out loud, don't rush in too quickly to try to solve it, okay? Just listen. <laughs> you don't have to fix it. We can't. And, and I've seen it go both ways, but for the most part, it's us guys that we, it's like, let's get mm -hmm. to the, let's, let's try to fix it. I think fixing it sometimes comes off as, as criticism. Or, or that they, they didn't yeah. think of that when they did. They're just wanting a moment to say, express mm -hmm. their displeasure. And it's either with you, and, or it's with the situation. It could be work. It could be anywhere. And then if we can practice at the very beginning, patience and the endurance, it can grow from just really properly listening. Not going already to the next response or, or, or what you're going to say next, but try to listen to what they're saying then. All right. So remember the golden rule. <laughs> uh, you know, do it to others as you have them do unto you. We put that into marriage and we apply that to patience. I know I need people to be patient with me. And I need to be patient, especially with the ones that I love the most. Oh, amen. I, I think the, the whole idea is that you've heard patience is a virtue. And when I think about that, I think about 2 Peter chapter 1, when it says verse 3, that God has given us all things that pertain to life and the godliness. And we're trying to do what's right in the sight of God. And that's to love our wives, our spouses, as Christ loved the church. And to, not, and to bring up our children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. But it says, do not be bitter towards them. And I think it's a bitter, sarcastic, impatient that we need to, to walk, worry about and watch out for but, uh, or be concerned about. But also in 2 Peter, it's that progression of things that we really want to attain. And it says in verse, um, that's 1 Peter, 2 Peter, excuse me, verse 5. But also for this very reason, give all diligence to add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance. And to perseverance, godliness. Now that word there, patience, perseverance, that endurance. And these are the kind of progressions. Because if you do, you'll get to that godliness, that brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness to what the biggest thing is, is love. And the, to love someone is to really be patient with their needs. All right, so there's our challenge for this week. We're going to practice patience. Hurry up. <laughs> Hurry up and be patient. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Seriously. Well, thank you for joining us today. As always, thank you for supporting what we're doing here. Uh, we're just a couple of gospel preachers that love God and love family, and we want you to be successful in your family relationship, too, in your relationship with God. And so, as we always end the program, let's let our family talks be family, family practice. practice. God bless. Have a great day.